your turn. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I did the last one. They live on Pig Beach, by the way. They're swimming pigs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you have to walk to it because it's not attached. It's an island and yeah. There's also an iguana beach, which doesn't sound near as much fun. Are they the swimming iguanas? I hope so. Otherwise, how are they going to get food? Um, there are also a few case rats and strays, cats and goats, but they're not important now. <laughs> What's important now is to ask you to like, subscribe and follow. This is Truly News. And if you've ever gone and seen the swimming pigs in the Bahamas, um, send us a note. Please send us information, <laughs> pictures, notes, um, stories you made up. We don't care. Any of the above would be terrific. To the TITR at netradio.network. That's the one. I was so good at that, and then I. You sort of fell off the wagon. Last didn't time, you? yeah. Gifted. Well, I'm in therapy. <laughs> like, subscribe, and follow. This is truly news, and and help me with my therapeutic need to keep saying the the email wrong. Anyway, my name's Tony. I'm Scott. And I'm an emailaholic. Ooh. Don't laugh. I'm sure it's a thing somewhere. Probably New York or California. Maybe. Maybe Massachusetts. Illinois, probably, maybe. And coming to a city Minis near Minnesota you. soon. Yeah. In, yeah. Two years we got to this guy. Two years. <laughs> this is True Really News with Scott Combs and Tony Vercanis. All the news you're about to hear is true. Really? As far as you know. From Reason.com, the Brickbat File. Two quick stories. I just love the name of it. Yeah. It, it, and, and it's it's worth it. Batman, Bat Girl, Brickbat. <laughs> City officials in Des Moines, Iowa. Hey. Have, have a great. Desmonez. Oh, sorry. What was I thinking? Actually, it'd be Des Moines. Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, have agreed to pay. Wow, he just went from France to someplace what? else. Car Caribbean? I don't. <laughs> anyway, the city officials have agreed to pay $125,000 to settle a lawsuit bought, brought by Daniel Robbins, who was detained for, you ready? Filming mm. police officers who were illegally parked. <laughs> I find that amusing. But They did not me. arrest him, but they did seize his phone and camera and only returned them two weeks later. Let me guess. The lawyer demanded it. Did it still have the... Uh, oh, I have no idea. They don't say. My guess is no. Second story. Christine Gauthier, a paraplegic former member of the Canadian Army. No, no, no. It's pronounced Des Moines. <laughs> <laughs> told members of the House of Commons way up there in Canada that she contacted Veterans Affairs Canada to try they to... Still have they still have actual like House of Commons? I mean, yeah, well, why? In oh, name only. Okay. It's titular. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you <"Yuller." laughs> Anyway, she was trying to find out why it was taking so long to get a wheelchair ramp in her home. I wonder my wife said she raised three kids. <laughs> <laughs> she said she got a letter back offering her assist assisted suicide instead. <laughs> don't laugh we got two years of minnesota's yeah. rampant stupid <laughs> says hey that sounds like a good idea let's do that <laughs> just it's, it's hilarious you need a wheelchair ramp wouldn't you rather be dead <laughs> wouldn't death be better than a wheelchair ramp really i have decided death is the life for me i have a letter saying that if you're so desperate madam we can offer you maid Medical assistance in dying, said Gauthier. Oh, I thought it was a maid. That would be more sense than... Right. She's been trying to get the ramp yeah. for five years. This is kind of destroying that idea that Canadians are nice. Yeah, they've... Well, some of them are. The rest are socialists. Yeah. <laughs> what is and wrong with And generally in some form of government. Yeah. And in any case, that that letter saying that, yeah. Is so far out of line. I think there should be an amazing lawsuit. But you're in Canada. Well, let's see what happens. Occasionally they do things right. Well, yeah. I mean, I realize it's kind of like the the lawyer people, the yep. ACLU. Yeah. 
Yeah. Once every year, they get one of the cases right. Yep. And we'll see. That just seems... That's past creepy. I know. I know. That's past creepy at a trot right into disturbing. <laughs> a loggerhead sea turtle named Rocky paused ever so briefly on the sand at Juno Beach, Florida, Wednesday. Why wasn't he named after a beer if he's a loggerhead? Because they named him Rocky. There's no beer named Rocky. Wait for it. Okay. Well, if you want to go that route, the Coors is, is brewed in the Rocky Mountains. So. Oh, good. I'm assuaged. That's surprisingly easy. That means something's wrong. Where was I? Loggerhead sea turtle Rocky paused briefly on the sand Wednesday morning at Juno Beach, Florida, before slowly crawling into the Atlantic Ocean. You see, he had spent six weeks rehabbing at Florida's Loggerhead Marine Life Center. Police think this may give them an end to the international drug trade among loggerhead turtles. Rocky, no, you got to no. find us two people to help us distribute. Well, <laughs> two turtles. The Tortuga Syndicate. Oh, Listen, boy. Turtle, come out of there. No, come out of there. <laughs> come there with all your fins up. Let's go. Listen, the first turtle that talks gets the deal. So turtle hospital staff and volunteers cheered as Rocky made his way down the beach. Well, I don't know. Is it a he? How do you know if a turtle's a he? Anyway, Rocky made his way down the beach, which is directly across the street from the center. He was See, now I had this awful picture of him walking from the center across the street, getting run over. End of Rocky. Rocky was equipped with a blue tracking device on his back, which allows the staff now to continue monitoring him. He is 220-pound female turtle. He is? So now it's Rocky is a 220-pound female turtle who will henceforth be referred to as she. Was found floating off North Hutchinson Island in December with a tear in her lung mm. when she was struck by a boat. Oh. Oh, no, no. It's worse. It doesn't. It's not going to, like, kill her, kill her. Yeah. According to Andy Deerhart, the president and CEO of, of something, um, the turtle had a perforation in the lung, so it was trapping air in its body cavity. And couldn't dive. Couldn't dive. Mm. So it is what they refer to when you can't dive. It's a floater. Could not get underwater. That's a good way to end up is food. Mm -hmm. The center's goal is to rehab the turtles and get them back into their natural habitat and, and hopefully get off the fentanyl. No, I'm sorry. Uh, he also said, every one of these animals that goes back is critical to the survival of the sea turtle populations, especially a large breeding female like Rocky, who immediately looked back and slapped him. What do you mean, large? <laughs> <laughs> Does this shell make my ass look big? Listen, look at these fins. Come on. <laughs> look at these flippers. I'm a Mr. fine dude. Have you ever seen that meme of the uh, the little, it was a tortoise. It was a, it was a small one, a very young one, but having marital relations with a tennis shoe? No. <laughs> That's the noise it makes. <laughs> uh, I thought the international <laughs> loggerhead drug trade was going to be the line, but guess not. <laughs> what was that noise again? <laughs> yeah, that was it. <laughs> Sounds about right. It was close. Two parents sold their son's house after he disinvited them from his nuptials over fears they might embarrass his partner's family. Uh, dude, have you not watched The Big Bang Theory? <laughs> this is a tactical I mean, come on, error. Penny's family wasn't mocked, and God knows we could have. <laughs> we are not white trash. <laughs> yes, we are. The father of the husband-to-be took to social media to explain why he and his wife or to explain that he and his wife purchased a second home to be used by their son when he moved to college. They pay the tax on the property, plus maintenance fees, and the boy, who pays no rent, handles the utilities. Dad continued to detail the arrangement Cush for deal. years. Huh? Cushy deal. Right? They want Even to adopt anyone? I'm a little old, I know, but... <laughs> well, things were going well even after their son's fiance who the family previously liked, moved into the home. Oh, oh, previously. Uh -huh. yeah. However, following... On earlier episodes. <laughs> following a family barbecue, things changed. 
when they were informed by their son that they were no longer welcome at his wedding. He tells me that her family feel that we are not good enough and will embarrass them at a family wedding and that we are all uninvited to the wedding. Uh, you in the back with the hand raised. So the folks who aren't good enough yep. are basically housing yep. their daughter. Oh, wait for it. Oh. I let a week go by to calm myself down. I just went with two in bourbon. <laughs> and I drive back to the PA house. The new future in-laws are in the house along with the fiancé. It appears they've all moved into the home. They ask me why I'm there. I tell them that since we aren't invited to the wedding, I was coming over to talk to my son. They tell me to leave their house. Whose name is on the title? Mom and Dad. Oh, might not have been your best move. Okay, go ahead. I lost it and told them they had 30 days to get out. Tell my son your best move. Tell my son I'm selling the house and he could find somewhere else to live with all of you. I go to a realtor in town and list the house for sale. Last I saw, the house had been sold. Whatever happened to that poor destitute family? And <laughs> wow. And this is unbelievable. Stupid. This is stupid, really, news. Yeah. And some some young men understand, young women understand, if, if your potential future spouse is asking, asking you to do these things. Yeah. Yeah. That's a red flag so big that you and should never stop And if they're not standing running. up when their parents are doing these things, yeah. then you can walk away, but you still want to leave the other direction. Actually, you want them to walk away. <laughs> You'd like yeah. that to happen. Because it's your house. I mean, your yeah. dad's paying for it. Yeah. Wow. Right? Prosecutors say a man broke into a UK industrial park. This seems almost inconsequential. But being as we're recording this on Shrove Tuesday. Okay. Which is the day before Ash Wednesday, which is the start of Lent. In the Christian church calendar. Really? I thought I cleaned this off. Lent, not oh, Lent. Oh, I'm giving up Lent for Lent. And there's a little bit over here on the shoulder thing. Yeah, I thought so. A man who prosecutors said broke into a UK industrial park to steal almost 200,000 chocolate Easter eggs. But Cadbury has, has pleaded guilty to theft and criminal damage. Prosecutor, prosecutor said that. Joby Poole, the 32-year-old, used a metal grinder to break through a gate in the industrial park. Oh, well, that was noisy for a while. Well, we're talking it's in Telford, central England. I mean, it's not like it's out on an island all by itself with, the, you know, the creepy music and the castle on the hill. <laughs> I've watched way too many Hammer films. That'd be Wales anyway. Yeah. Oh! Werewolves be a, of London. That would be a small turtle in a shoe. Where was I now? Uh, he got through the gate at the industrial park in Telford, then used a stolen semi truck because honestly, if you're going to commit a crime, just it's a keep, theme. Keep it, yep. 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 Did he steal any lobster tails to go along with it? One would hope, but no, he just towed away a 31,000 pounds worth of Cadbury cream eggs. I was right. It was Cadbury. Oh yeah. <laughs> and other chocolate goodies. I'm a genius. The West Murcia police tweeted that shortly after the break-in, officers stopped a vehicle, presumably purporting to be an Easter Bunny. <laughs> okay, who says who says the Brits have no sense of humor? They arrested a man on suspicion of theft. The prosecutor said Poole gave up when he realized the police were after him. Poole, according to the prosecutor, walked towards the police with his hands up. He was arrested, and the load of chocolate was covered. He added that Poole had planned the theft and that he had a previous conviction or two for handling stolen goods. No, so this wasn't his first soiree. Handling or fondling? Stop it. Poole entered, Poole entered guilty pleas to theft of a trailer, theft of its contents, and criminal damage to a chain lock. What about... What I about, hardly knew you. Can the egg sue for, like, trauma? <laughs> I would think so. He'll be sentenced next month, which is chocolate Easter, lovers is everywhere are going to be trying to adopt those chocolates. I'm, even if we have to pay for them. <laughs> I mean, yes, we will. This is true. Really news. Send email to TITR at netradio.network.